welcome back to another episode of Over the Glass. I am your host, Jay. And I'm Nessa, co-host or something, rather. We're going to start off today's episodes by... Episodes? Episode by... <laughs> Talking about the Sharks, because I went to their game last night, and it was my first game of the season. I had a great time. Look how cute this Aloha shirt is. I love all the little details. There's little hockey sticks. You got Sharks logo. You got, where is it? I know there's one. Oh, yeah, look, the goalie masks on here. Pucks. It's so cute. I love all the details. And it's decent quality, except... The stitching was coming apart already, but that's fine. It's fine. I won't be wearing this whole lot. <laughs> um, so I haven't been to a Sharks game since, I believe, Pride Night last year because I've just, I had a crazy year and could, didn't have time to, to go out to San Jose. I did um, get another sensory kit because just to have just a case and it's, pretty much the same thing that I got at the Barracuda game, except I asked if they had the headphones, the noise canceling headphones, and for that you still have to give your uh, driver's license or credit card so to make sure that you return it at the end of the night. Um, but you, you specifically have to ask for those. Otherwise they'll give you these these like cinch bags full of sensory things, same as the Barracuda game. There's that little toy, there's you know Kleenex hand sanitizer, wipes, whatever, a little coloring book. <laughs> and this one is so cool because it came with hockey cards. And I'm so excited to share this because because I got into hockey so like later in my life, later as if I'm 50 years old, I've never got I mean, hockey people cards still, before. I mean, people still collect hockey cards when they're adult. You need to be no, just I know. a kid. No, no, I know. But I feel like. Any, oh, you're right. You're right. I'll take. It I back. actually Anyways. don't think I collected any cards. I I collected like Marvel cards. I didn't collect Marvel? sports cards. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to share with you because I've never gotten hockey cards before. So we're gonna see what kind of cards I have. Are you ready? Yes. So I got Keith Kincaid when he was on the Devils. Is he still on the oh. Devils? Uh, no, he's no, not. he's not. He's not. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, these are probably going to be pretty old. I got <laughs> Devin Dubnik. Sharks Aww, Legends. <laughs> Doobie. And then... The Wild were good at one point. <laughs> once upon a time. And then I got a, time, a Thomas Vanek. I actually don't know this player. I've never heard of him. But he um, the Jackets. Mm... Seems kind of familiar, but I can't put my, my finger on it. Anyways, there's only three in here. That's actually but quite that's... nice that you got, like, two pretty notable yeah. hockey players in there. That's actually look, okay. a, a decent look at, pull. Look how this, look how it's shiny. The, yeah. The Dubnik one. It's really pretty. Cute details. Anyways. That happened, but the game was cool. Um, as we all know, the Sharks are having an awful season, which us Sharks fans aren't super mad about because of the what do they call it? The Celebrini Cup games against like the Blackhawks. We're invested in the tank. Yes, we de we we are. Um, so I wasn't going in expecting a win, right? I'm just like, you know what? Hockey game live. We're gonna, we're here for a good time. I went with my brother, which apparently I've never taken him to a Sharks game. So it was his first Sharks game. And then another friend who's also first Sharks game. Like, I'm trying to get her into hockey. So, noobs. And they got to witness one of the funnest games of the season, right? I know it was against the Ducks, and they're not that great either. But they put up a good fight. The Sharks were scoring goals. We got free tacos. We got a Sharks win. We got a free giveaway. It was a good night. I got to watch Tomas you know, Hurdle the, score the a goal. Upsides. Yeah. It's, you know, it's it's kind of like how I go into baseball games, regardless of if they're, like, winning or, or not. Like, I, what I like about going to baseball games is just, it's chill. Like, I feel like 
especially because it's so long and you're not you're not focused in at every single moment of ice time where the where the where the baseball is like you know where yeah. it is it's eventually going to hit the bait the baseball bat and it's going to go somewhere whether or not it's going to be something to be excited about not not quite like a hockey game so i kind of like the the different dynamics of it and you just are able to relax and have fun with the people that you go with now yeah. nowadays with sharks games you can kind of kick back and and not focus in so much it is still a little frustrating when nothing is really happening but you know we we know the the era that we're in right now and i'm rolling with it yeah but like i said because they they're not very good they got to see a decently exciting game you know there is it was pretty fast paced it was gritty there was a couple fights almost broke out um and like my friend who um again it was her first time she was like i'm so used to baseball i'm not used to them so it's like how violent it is you know whenever they they smashed into each other and uh, she had a it's good so time. funny when they do get violent in baseball <laughs> i just start <laughs> laughing and it's just like if only when you guys knew. Yeah. yeah okay you guys I have don't even one... know i know <laughs> i have one complaint from the night we decided we i got tickets in section 221 row eight when we got there i had seats one two and three row i mean seat number one was broken the whole bottom hmm. part with the part where you're supposed to sit it broke off so it's not possible to sit there i don't i forgot to like talk to someone about it my brother did because he was supposed to sit there but he talked to one of the blue jacket people the, what do you call them Blue jacket people. The ushers. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> wow, words. Um, I don't know if he was gonna tell anybody else who like can fix that or whatever, but um for now, avoid buying tickets. Section two twenty one, row eight, seat one. For in case for all the trying. folks that listen to this podcast, we've, <laughs> we've given the giving you the insider scoop. <laughs> um <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I was going to say something in relation to Broken to all seats. that, and I and I forgot now. Um, but I did see right before the game that we activated Logan Couture and Nico Sturm. So I <laughs> texted my hockey friends, being like, "Well, the tank's been real, guys, but I think we're actually going to start winning some games now." <laughs> yeah, what a difference and, Couture made, right? Hmm. And my friends like, were like, no, just go sit over there and rest. <laughs> just just chill out. I know. Um, but um, it, it's nice to kind of have them back. Um, I, I mean, it contributed to an exciting game that didn't start getting exciting on the score sheet until after the Niners won. Yeah. And <laughs> they were waiting. So. Yeah, so for 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 the Bay Area folks that listen to this podcast, like what a great night for for Bay Area sports. I, the the Niners were having us on a roller coaster. Um I didn't really start watching football with intent um until like a couple of years ago. And so I'm not quite familiar with still a lot of aspects of football. And this was my first um, playoffs run where I've been like more invested. And so most of that game, I was like, I feel like this is really bad, but I don't know enough of what's going on. So I'm kind of in this like middle spot where I'm just like, I need someone to validate whether I should be feeling one way or the other. But um, towards the end of the game, I mean, like it was like back and forth between the Packers and and the Niners. And just like in the last like five minutes or so, like that last rush that the Niners had was just like 
that was that was like their their a a game right there and in that desperation throw for the packers to try and like get some kind of um force it into overtime or whatever would have happened after that for it to turn into an interception i was like screaming i was like in i was just in so much joy but as I was telling you right before we hopped on, I started getting that feeling that I do when the Sharks are in the playoffs. And I'm like, I don't know if I like this because I haven't felt this in a while. And it's stressful. <laughs> it's, it's so much stress. Did you I watch the game? I don't want to be here right now. Did you watch it by yourself or were you with friends? I watched it by myself. Like, I don't... <laughs> screaming at the TV by I? yourself? <laughs> like, the only, the only Niners friends that I have are really my friends that live like an hour and a half away. Nor yeah. up north and they're not going to watch it until like their kid goes to sleep so yeah it's just me <laughs> me just me me and twitter trying to yeah. figure it out <laughs> yeah well we, we were watching through we were walking through the concourse like looking for food just like as the game was starting the sharks game and we walked by one of the bars that's on the uh, upper level and we just heard people screaming and cheering like yeah and i looked over they were watching the niners game and they had just scored a touchdown and i was like yes and i kept like religiously trying to check the score but the the wi-fi in the building wasn't working for me or like my service sucked and it was like super laggy so i couldn't check it but i could only check it like every 10 15 minutes or so so i couldn't see like the the score in real time and then I think it was like five minutes of the game left and I noticed it was uh the score was seventeen twenty one, I think. And I was like, Oh my god, they're gonna lose. Oh my god, and I can't even keep up with the score, like what's gonna happen? And then I checked again and there was like fifty seconds in the game and they finally took the lead and I was like, Oh my god, they're gonna win. I hope they like keep this score because they're they were only up three, right? Twenty one and twenty four. Yep. All they needed was a field goal to tie it. But I'm not watching the game. I don't know what's happening. So I just have to sit there and hope that the game ends with them like winning, right? It was funny. They they showed the score on the on the scoreboard, the Niners, and the whole stadium, like the whole arena started cheering. There were a lot of folks wearing Niners gear. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, the first I think it was during the first quarter it was raining. And like um Purdy came out um, for the first time and he had his glove on and I guess he figured like, no, that's messing with me like in my throat, like I'm not going to wear it. But I was just thinking like, God, this is just like, how terrible is it that it's raining right now and it's just like probably going to mess up like everybody's game and um, I'm just like, no, like how is this happening? But it ended up, I guess, stopping at some point during that but like they just kept making like little mistakes and they managed to get within field goal range and they missed the field goal i think it was <laughs> while it was still raining i was just like this is awful and like i don't like this feeling i don't want to be a football <laughs> fan anymore <laughs> and i started thinking like this is why i only dedicate like my heart and soul to like to die hard mode to like one sport i can't i can't do this with all these sports it's like, too much this is yeah. too much it's too much but uh yeah and then and then they have to go and freaking win and i remember in like the first quarter i like tweeted out like i hate sports <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like i hate this i hate this and then the and then at the end of the game i was like just kidding i like sports i like sports <laughs> <laughs> i like it again it's okay guys false alarm <laughs> But yeah, Hello. so um, yeah, so then after that, I was like, okay, I'm going to tune in Sharks game, and then five seconds into tuning into the game, they scored. I was like, that's what's up. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. For me, because I was like, I kind of had it on my laptop on the side, but I, I, I wasn't really paying attention, and I didn't have the audio on either. So I'm like, okay, they're not. Neither one of these teams are scoring, and. You tuned in the second it's, it's period. It's whatever. Yeah, it was like midway through the second. Okay, because I was we sat down late because um, we were looking for food and we were very indecisive. So we sat down midway through the first period, and the Sharks had actually scored a goal, 
and like obviously everyone's all excited and then they announced that they took the goal away <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, i think it was on the off side or something so we were like what the fuck <laughs> so then the period ended zero zero but we got to witness them scoring unfortunately it didn't stand Mm-hmm. Uh, so then the second period that's when they started going off right i think they scored three goals then and the ducks two or something like that um the ducks got lucky on one of them they uh i didn't see the puck cross the line completely from the video that they showed us but see that turnover i was like okay like hypothetically we can probably agree that it cross like just by the ways of physics, we could probably deduce that it crossed the line. But this whole thing of like, it needs to be conclusive to overturn it. And it's like, okay, I know they probably didn't show us every camera angle. Like they probably got it like, you know, in every every direction in like Toronto. So if that's the case, if they found a camera angle that shows it like somewhere i don't know like x-rays vision like like on top of mackenzie's pads and sure but i'm not gonna say that it shouldn't have been overturned i just get annoyed with these rules that we're it's supposed to be conclusive and where yeah where was the mm -mm. (laughs) like the more the more that we have these coaches challenges the more i'm now seeing the argument of how ridiculous the um the ability to challenge and offsides i don't remember oh it was mcdavid it was mcdavid who was in who like post game he was asked about it and he's basically saying like yeah if you zoom in like enough you'll be able to find like oh this much offsides overturned the puck, which I find pretty annoying. Yeah. It takes away from the excitement of the game if you're yeah. going to be like, yeah, let me let me <laughs> challenge it. For a game that's supposed to be fast paced, it really slows it down. And like takes it's not momentum. it's not going to matter that you're like this much offsides. Yeah. It doesn't it, change the fact <laughs> that the play is still if, if you were nudged developed. over a little bit. <laughs> Like, yeah, if he's good. this much off sides, yeah, that, that's yeah. blatantly off side, and Honestly, you should call that. I don't even mind the argument that if a team scores a goal on a missed offside call, I feel like the goal should still stand because that's the ref's fault. <laughs> if it's close, you know, not if it's like blatantly yeah. offside. Yeah, if it's not like Hurdle trying to dive back on side, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, he was on side, his glove made it over. <laughs> Like I've just I've just found myself more and more annoyed when uh we have to stop the game because yeah. a goal was scored but the coach is like, Oh, it was probably off sides. Let let's let's ask like the video dudes upstairs like to, to run it back and, and look at it and let's spend the next five minutes having the refs call give a you know, give a ring to Toronto to, to overturn this. Like it just it's starting to get annoying (laughs) yeah yeah i see yeah you know what's not annoying you like that segue (laughs) um the hockey diversity alliance announced the inaugural hta winterfest during all-star weekend please tell us about this so i will tell you about it by reading the tsn (laughs) article (laughs) So the Hockey Diversity Alliance announced Thursday that it will be launching the inaugural Winter Fest, a community event committed to highlighting the importance of diversity inclusion in hockey on February 3rd at Toronto's Trinity Bellwoods Park uh, during the NHL All-Star Weekend. Um, So, quote, the Winter Fest will transform Trinity Bellwoods Park into a vibrant hub of hockey, entertainment, and community spirit, um, end quote, said HDA chairman and former NHL player Kay Malou in the statement. Quote, HDA is honored to host this first winter fest celebrating Canadian heritage and diversity in hockey during the NHL All-Star Weekend while 
the spotlight is on Toronto. It's a great, it's great to have all the founders in town and community to see their favorite HDA players and members on the ice, end quote. So this free event is going to have a celebrity hockey match, youth ice and ball hockey competitions, and a hockey skills showcase. Um, attendees, pretty much you get to see your favorite players. Um, there's going to be a diverse food scene with food trucks and, and prizes. Um, so pretty much, I mean, it, it sounds like their own like little a, all-star a, event. A, yeah. Like a, like a hockey, uh, a fan event, which, yeah. you know, I, I think it's cool and focusing on of, the diversity I'm, this time. Yeah. Like I'm actually looking forward to just from the things that we've kind of been seeing coming out that um, in relation to all stars, like, I mean, Toronto being like this huge hub for, for hockey, like, I, I think that they're taking advantage of that. And just with the community just being like huge into hockey in that area amongst other places in, in North America, like, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to the stuff that they've they've got planned. Yeah, I think it's really smart um, planning from from their end because they're doing it All Star Weekend. So you can, you know, all these kids are get, probably going to want to go. Toronto is like obsessed with hockey, as we know. They're going to go want to see all the the big names, the stars, the the all these like elite players. But then also you'll have kids who are from like marginalized communities that want to see themselves in those stars as well. So they can go to these events on top of, if on top of the all star. If they can't afford that, they can go to this one because it's free. And they'll be able to see themselves like in these roles where, you know, maybe it'll inspire them to get into hockey and they'll be the next all star in the future, you know? Like it's it's really I think it's really well thought out on their their part. Plus I'd be I'd love to go just for the fact that there's gonna be diverse food there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also we haven't really seen like much coming out of the Hockey Diversity Alliance for one reason or the other. I mean, a number of them are still active players, so I can imagine, you know, they they might not be able to do as much during the regular season as they want to. But there was just like this huge void for a while ever since they launched from the initial, they did it during like the pandemic where they had like Dumba come out and, you know, make his statement and things like that. But after that, it like the last thing that I heard was that they just couldn't come to an agreement or whatever to have the NHL work with them. And then they just kind of seem to like go away. So I'm interested to see what else the HCA is going to start doing because there was a lot of, at least from my perspective, hype when they they became a group. Um, and then like the NHL created their like own version of it, which felt like strange. Yeah. Um, so there's like a lot of these like little groups that like are based around uplifting diverse voices and representation and all this stuff. So, um, the HDA in particular, I feel like we, I've been curious to see like, what is, what is their next direction? So this is nice to kind of like, for them to take advantage of Toronto getting like all of this more attention than usual <laughs> like there's a, there's a never ending plethora of media attention in Toronto but just the fact that there's going to be like a lot of folks just kind of coming into that space like why not take advantage of giving folks this opportunity to you know engage in this sort of event yeah I'm really excited to see what comes out of it all the pictures and things mm-hmm Okay, so the NHLPA has launched this new initiative with um, 
with attention to mental health. Um, so it's called First Line. Um, so this came out on the 10th. It said today the NHL Players Association collaboration with Opening Minds and Mental Health Commission of Canada proudly announces the official launch of First Line, an education and leadership program developed to strengthen NHLPA members' mental health knowledge and skills. Um, the first of its kind in professional sports, First Line was developed by Mental Health Commission Canada, Opening Minds, and NHLPA's health and wellness team. Specifically for NHL players, this program is designed to directly address the issues faced by players and their families. First Line will increase knowledge of common health, uh, mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, substance use, and self-harm. Uh, provide skills for offering peer-to-peer -peer support and educate about the stigma of mental health, uh, mental illness, and how to combat it. So... That's interesting how it says specifically for nhl players does that mean active nhl players or does that include retired NHL players? i mean i think because the nhlpa is for is the union for nhl players i think it kind of makes sense that it's geared towards them no i understand but it doesn't say active or not so I'm curious to know if they will still offer the support to those who end up retiring because of mental health. They need the help. Yeah. I mean, I'm not too sure how the the PA is is structured, like in terms of retirees. Um, but it would be nice if they, because, you know, we, we see all these um, stories and we know the situation with how, like, the aftermath of hits and head contact and the NHL pretty much, like, refusing to acknowledge that CTE is real. <laughs> um, it is concerning that these players put themselves through the grinder day in, day out. And, you know, like, it, it's, it's sad to think that uh, only as long as you are within the NHL, like, we, we care about your well-being. But, right. you know, if something comes as a result of you spending time in the NHL and – just the way that the Department of Player Safety is handling things right now, like, you know, God forbid these players enter their retirement, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, and they just kind of are, like, sent on their way without any real help. And um, it makes me think about, like, I mean, it's not to say that Oh, like to to be stable, you need to have like an an education background that if your hockey career ends tomorrow, you have something to fall upon. But I feel like it's helpful, and I'm concerned with the the way that we kind of streamline. And this, and I'm talking specifically on like the men's side. Like we know on the women's side, like they almost have to look at all their options to like because their their careers as we could see with the phf could could just end tomorrow and yeah. you know and they and up until currently with the with the with the pwhl there's been very few opportunities in north america for the women's side of sports to have any sort of like full-time sustainability but for the men's side i feel like from the moment they hit the ice and like this is more in like the demographics of like canada or like minnesota and boston where like the where hockey is kind of like king in those areas they're 
you know, if they have a dream of making the NHL, it's like, well, just just stick around and you'll probably get there if you just devote your entire existence to this sport. And many of these guys do, and many of them will go the juniors route. There's folks that end up going like through the NCAA and then they can kind of like get a bit of an education while they are playing on the side. And, but for, for folks who are just their entire existence is just hockey and then it could end the next day. Like that's all they know. Yeah. You know, and then you see like these retirees, like, well, if you are a fan favorite or maybe you've got like a good personality, yeah, you, you could probably find yourself like on a panel somewhere or maybe you can like start a podcast. <laughs> but, you know, it's like they I'm not saying that those are not like viable skill sets, but it's like they can't see themselves past staying in some form within the sport. Yeah. Um, I wanted to mention also that, you know, their path, if they don't go to school for anything outside of hockey, you usually see them trying to get into broadcasting because then they get to talk about hockey. It's not a podcast, but, you know, it's TV broadcast. Because oh, it really is. It's like hockey is really all that they know they're skating from a very young age and they're living eating breathing hockey <laughs> it basically takes over their life um and this is something i wanted to talk about as well with um couture as we know he was injured for all so far all of the season up until yesterday uh and he did an interview with jason demers talking about how much the the, the injury had affected his mental health because you know, for him, it was the fear of the unknown, where some days he would wake up and he would feel fine. Other days, he felt like he couldn't walk or get out of bed even because, again, we don't know what the injury was because they never um, announced those details to us as fans. They actually did. They did mention it, um, but I didn't have time to look up what it was. It, it's it's a hip groin um, injury. Hip groin injury. It had a name. I just didn't have it available. Oh, to... I, I missed that. Okay, take take backsies. I guess they did announce it to us. They just didn't see it. Uh, which I guess it makes sense if he's talking about not being able to walk. If it's like his hips or groin. <laughs> uh, how the heck? What did he do? Because he said he did that over the off season. Anyways. <laughs> um. Yeah, he was just talking about how it really took a toll on his mental health because he didn't know when he would return. Like most injuries, they give him a timeline. You know, you'll have you'll be out for so and so days, weeks, whatever. This one, it was like you just got to work through it. And he didn't know if he was going to come back to play hockey. And you know, for someone who that's their whole life, you, know, you can only imagine what what that does to your your mental health tr trying to think of like what am i going to do next <laughs> so i did find the tweet from shang that identified what he was dealing with uh -huh. it's called an i'm going to butcher this so badly os ostatus pubis <laughs> i probably butchered that so much it's o s t e i t i s and then p u B I S. So it's an inflammation of the pubic symphalis and surrounding muscle insertion. So something to deal with his pelvis and like it was inflamed. How the heck? So yeah. So I guess, you know, I don't I'm not really familiar with this, but that's what he was dealing with. And that's crazy. Can you imagine? Yeah. That's that's a sensitive area already. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now I'm like, how did you injure it? Like, what did you run into? <laughs> One of my friends said that um, when when we first learned that Couture was going to be out, um, she was thinking like he must have like picked up his kid wrong from the crib. <laughs> 
Like, did he mess up his back? Oh, my speaking God. Speaking from experience. He, what? <laughs> not not me, my friends. Right, right, they're right. Like, oh, he probably just picked up his newborn wrong. <laughs> but they're not that heavy. <laughs> I mean, if, like, the repetitiveness of, like, leaning no, into no. a crib, You're I can right. see, like, you could, oh, something that oh, weighs, like, five pounds. Interesting. Interesting. But it, I don't think that was the case since it's no, in right. his hip, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe um, but, no. but I'm looking it up, and, I mean, that whole area, like... Yeah, if you can't get it right, then you can't play hockey. Like, right. Like if you just if you if you are in pain just walking, you should maybe like not play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um but yeah, so whatever the case was to how that all kind of works into the amount of time he needed to rehab back, like I mean it's nice to see him back on the ice and, you know, obviously not having someone of that talent on your roster. I mean, yeah, we're invested in this tank, but it, it's, it's been still nice to win sometimes. It looked, it looked bad for quite a while there. It's like to the point where it's, it, it's just, it's two, just insufferable two, to watch them play. Two 11 game losing streaks in the season so far. It was brutal. And just the amount of players, like, I feel like, I mean, I know every team is dealing with, with injuries. And, like, so when our players go down, I really don't feel like, oh no, like our season's ruined. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, the tank. Like, it's just, we're just free falling even faster. Yeah. Um, but it just seems like the Sharks in particular, and maybe it's just because like they've had to defend so much in these games. It just it is much harder to defend for an entire game than try to go into the zone and try to try to score, you know, especially if you get stuck out there for long periods of time. Like I remember there were like some games where they've got like the time on ice and you're mm -hmm. and so for people who haven't played, like, if you are beyond two minutes, like, you're already beyond gas. You were just, you are barely, like, keeping yourself up at that point. So just the amount of times where it's like, oh, yeah, X person is, has been out there for three minutes. Three minutes? <laughs> he's, like, just, he's just hoping someone else has a bit more energy to, like, get that, get that puck just past the red line. So they can hobble their way back onto the bench. Yeah, and sometimes they really um, do be hobbling. <laughs> and so, you know, when we have games like that, like, yeah, I kind of understand why someone is injured. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be um, interesting to see what, what direction they go now that we have two key players back in the lineup. Yeah, we're going to start winning again. Ugh. But we're dead last, so... Even if we get a <sighs> bottom three, we still have a good chance at winning the lottery. I mean, at this point, I, I feel like even if we are, like, if if the race for the, the 32nd place is so much in our hands, the first overall pick is probably not going to, going to land in our, in our, in our favor. Right. We need to be like second or third worst <laughs> uh, all right so speaking of players being out in the nhl pa um val nutrition has entered the player assistance program and there's just a lot of you know i I, as much as we speculate about this stuff, I want to make it known that I don't need to know these little things about players. Like when, when players go down, you know, I just wish them well type of things. I'm not the type of person who's like, well, you got to tell us because we've got to know all these like little things. Like I understand 
the need for privacy and then obviously like on the team side on this on a strategic level and for like the safety level so that a player who comes back doesn't get like targeted because the opponents know their their previous injury type of thing like i get that part but as we know for nutrition last season during the avalanche and the kraken playoffs he unexpectedly went away from the team there was something shady that went down in the hotel and we never heard about it and now that he is entering the player assistant program for some reason he was originally scratched during the game before for illness related reasons and then now we find out that he enters the player assistance program no no information related to that it's just i i just don't really know how to feel about these sort of things i mean obviously i wish him well but i'm also curious about is that woman in his hotel room doing well because yeah. That was really sketchy. The, because one of the uh, members of the Avalanche who was part of that whole, not, not directly part of it, but was there and speaking with the police and helping that woman, you know, get into the ambulance, he's no longer on the team. So, you know, it's just, I don't like moments like that with teams where it's like, okay, but what happened? And no one's saying anything. And what are you hiding? Yeah. So as we know, as Sharks fans, when the stuff with Kane went down, I was very critical about knowing, like, well, what's happening? What happened? Because this is the team that I root for. And this is not a good feeling. And so that's what I kind of think of when this stuff happens around a team. Where I'm just like, I'm sure fans are not happy that they don't know anything about what's going on about this player that I'm sure has a lot of fans you know, who are rooting for him. But you find yourself in a situation where you're just like, but should I be rooting for you? Like, what, what's happening? Yeah. Who are you? Right. Because you don't want to be in the position where you're defending someone who may have committed a crime of sorts. I don't. And he started the season where he didn't want to talk about it and he wished that everybody would, like, brush it under the rug. And it's like, I wish we could. <laughs> right. Right. There's just... That whole thing, like, it doesn't sit well with me, right? It's There was a woman who was found intoxicated, unconscious, in his hotel room. You don't know if he did it. You don't know what he did to her while she was unconscious. You don't know what happened. This guy's married, and, you know, if you have an open relationship, whatever. But if you're also, like, being... You do you. You're right. But if you're doing things outside of your marriage that was not agreed upon by your partner, it's also like, what are you doing? What? I do want to get an update, like you said, on, I would like an update on the, the woman who was found in the hotel, because it seemed like she was in pretty bad shape when they found her. Uh, and we don't, we don't know what happened to her. We don't. I don't even remember if we got her name. Nope. So you can't even look her. There's up no mention like, of it in this article. Is she still alive? <laughs> oh, you know, like it's just okay. Maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but still. So the part in particular that I was talking about with the the um, person on the team says records show the intoxicated woman who avalanche team doctor bradley changstrom 
suggested in a 911 call had likely overdosed on alcohol or, quote, something got mixed in a drink, end quote, was removed from the room and taken to the hotel's front entrance before first responders arrived. Records obtained through public disclosure don't explain the woman's removal from the room for the 90 minutes that lapsed between the woman when the woman was found and when Changstrom called 911. Changstrom, who told police he and Fuller had been with the woman inside the hotel room, quote, trying to get clothes on her, end quote, did not respond to Seattle Times interview requests. He no longer works for the team. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So, so some shit went down. And they don't want that to get out. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for me to root for this dude. Yeah, so it, it, it from from that makes it seem like he, there must have been oh, I don't wanna I don't wanna like speculate. But it just seems like someone's just trying to cover stuff up and uh dude who's no longer on the team, I don't know, did they give him like some hush money or something? <laughs> All this cheese man. <laughs> <laughs> just it's just like the whole part where it's like there's a lapse in time that yeah. is not being like accounted for. It's like it's just a lot of, you know, something that's gonna end up being made into a neck documentary that I'm gonna probably end up watching <laughs> dude I watched this documentary it's it's kind of crazy I it's called American Nightmare I don't know if did you you know about it no so I'm not saying you should go watch it because it's kind of eerie but it just it it's really frustrating that it happened in the Bay Area like Oh boy. Eight years ago. You're going to make me not want to leave my house. Continue. Go ahead. No, I mean, the guy got caught. Okay. That doesn't mean that there's not other creeps. (laughs) It's, well, (laughs) food for thought. Food for thought. (laughs) The more you know. Um, Yeah, it like happened like eight years ago in like Vallejo. And there was this couple that. Okay. Uh huh. Well, he's not there anymore. Calm down. (laughs) But it happened that, you know, my my mom freaking had an, a, a house up there for a while. That's why I was kind of like, my mind was blown because during that time, it took like several years for them to end up convicting this guy because like essentially the couple, um, they were having some problems, not, not anything, you know, just just life. And um, the the boyfriend ended up like calling 911 the next day and he had this story of like um he told the cops that you know his girlfriend was kidnapped in the middle of the night and you know the kidnappers made him like do this and that and and whatever and the cops were like super suspicious of the boyfriend and they basically had him like in the police uh, office, whatever it's called, interrogating him for like two days, and they didn't take him seriously because it his story seemed too much aligned with the movie Gone Girl. I've never seen that movie, mm-hmm. but they were just like, "Oh, he's just he it your story is too elaborate. That's why we won't take you seriously, and we're convinced that you actually killed your girlfriend and you've like buried her somewhere." And they basically were like pegging him as like the suspect. And then she ended up showing up like in SoCal where her dad lives like two days later and like would not talk to the cops initially. So there were, and then when she eventually did talk to the cops and told them everything, the cops did not believe her either. And like Vallejo PD was saying like, oh, these two people have wasted valuable like public services and resources for, you know, just to just to play this game or whatever. Blah blah. Turns out the the guy who had kidnapped her had actually been doing a series of that stuff for like several years. And every person who came to the police in their local area did not take them seriously. And he eventually got caught because there was a 
police department. I don't remember the area of it. Um, oh, um, it was in Dublin. It was in Dublin. They, um, the family ended up um, confronting him. He was attempting to kidnap their daughter. They confronted him. He ended up dropping his phone in their house. So they traced it back to his place in, oh, he had, they ended up calling it. It was like, it was registered or like the phone bill was um, connected to his mom. And then, so the mom said, oh yeah, my son's up in like Lake Tahoe right now, like in my, in my cabin up there that I own. They ended up tracing it to him. He was the one who was doing all these crimes throughout the Bay Area. And then like, Eight years later, you know, the, the, the couple that was at the heart of this whole thing ended up doing, putting together this uh, whole Netflix thing. Basically, you know, it, it's really shitty. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you a question. Like, what is the point of cops if they don't believe you when something happens to you? <laughs> Why are you there? I mean, the <laughs> ironic part of it is that this one cop actually tried her best to track down, like, who is behind all this. Based on the fact that when they found him up in Lake Tahoe and arrested him, they they, they were they found, like, this evidence. And one of the, um, like, the lady ended up having to wear, like, goggles over her face. And she had a strand of her hair that was stuck to, like, the duct tape on it. So mm -hmm. she was determined to track down, like, oh, no, there's another woman who's being victimized i need to help her and it was that cop in dublin who ended up you know getting everybody to like look back at this case and be like no they didn't make it up but that in that span of time which was really like i think only like a couple of months in comparison when they put together this whole thing for those couple of months, like it was on national television that like these two folks made this big hoax for two months or more than that. I don't oh, know wow. how the lapse in time. Wow. Look, I love oh me my a good gosh. mystery. I don't know how I feel but about I swear, <laughs> happening in real life. Getting back to hockey, like, are we going to end up there where it's going to turn into a Netflix show? I was just like, this poor couple that was like, hey, my my girlfriend is missing. It's like, it's because of you. You did it. What? You killed her. <laughs> where did you dump her body? You're just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Can you please help me find her? No, it's you. Did they arrest oh him? Oh my god, I can't, I can't, huh? Did they arrest him? The boyfriend? Uh-huh. I don't believe so, because, like, two, they had him for, like, a couple of days interrogating him, and then a couple of days later was when she showed up at her dad's place. And so then, so I think out. they kind of just, like, dropped it. And they were just like, oh, they just made it up. And they, like, wasted our time. Oh my god. So, oh, yeah. Like I'm not going to get into that, but yeah, <laughs> imagine, okay, are you good at writing? Should we write a, a book about a hockey player that goes rogue, suffering from CTE, oh and, and <laughs> becomes a serial killer? And then we'll sell it to Netflix? Yeah. <laughs> Let's make billions. Okay, anyway, sorry, like, huge, like, tangent, only to come back and say- I was say, so invested. <laughs> this the Val Nutrishkin thing is going to turn into a Netflix uh, <laughs> documentation docu series, whatever it is. Okay, um, another one for the series. A, a, another one that could be made for Netflix. Um, Corey Perry is reportedly headed to the Oilers, and they're <sighs> okay. So I don't know if you saw, but. So apparently, Corey was given the green light to be eligible to be to sign with with another team after being let go by the Blackhawks because he met with Gary Bettman and whatever discussion he had with Gary Bettman, Bettman's like, "Okay, cool, I allow it. You can go along your merry way and you can go and play hockey again." Mm -hmm. um, after 
being let go from the Blackhawks. Like there was in his statement, he had mentioned that he was going to seek help for his um, substance abuse with, with alcohol. So it doesn't seem like he went through the, the player's assistance program. He didn't mention that whether or not that's what he meant. Um, Who knows, but it's just one of those other things where I'm just like, what's going on? Like, and, and not just so I can know what's going on in his personal life, but more, I'm just concerned with just how, so he has, it seems like whatever happened with the Blackhawks was related to him being intoxicated. And from the time that he's let go from the Blackhawks who don't disclose what had happened, all they said that it didn't relate to any family members of the players and didn't relate to anything of the players. So that, that leaves members of the team. Mm -hmm. So something happened at some, at one of their events that he probably did something under the influence and they were like unacceptable. We can't have you here in our organization. Let him go. He says, I need to seek help only to him to get some green light that you're better now. It's only, you're fine to go and yeah, you're fine now. Whatever, whatever's the reason why you can't control yourself with alcohol among people. It's You're fixed. good to go now to go sign with, with the team and make thousands of dollars. And so the Oilers were not the only team that were in on wanting to sign Perry. The Panthers, the Bolts, and the Rangers were all interested in signing him. <laughs> and I just... It's so annoying... That these, that these teams, like, like, I don't know, do they get to like, okay, I'm even gonna, I don't even care that they get to know, like, cause I just feel like the acceptance level of allowing players on these teams are blinded by the desire to win the cup. And as we know, the Oilers are having a really rocky like beginning of the season. They fired their coach. They seem like they're turning things around. But the clock is ticking with Leon Dreisaitl and McDavid. And I feel like they are just going full in. I hope they lose them. They keep citing problematic players. They don't deserve a McDavid dry sidle. A muck dry sidle, if you will. <laughs> so I'm 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 sorry, Oilers fans. I'm I I hope you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mm, that's that just has we need to win at all costs that's written awful. all over it. And I wish and I wish Perry well. I I really hope that whatever level of ha- having issues with alcohol and the program that he went through the the help that he sought out you know i want to be proven wrong that maybe it was just a fluke and he just drank a bit too much that one night and it's not like this constant constant thing um but since we don't get any sort of that transparency, I just see this and be like, all these teams are desperate. And, you know, Corey Perry, like, maybe not so much that the player he used to be when he was with the Ducks, but still someone that you know can, like, have a sufficient impact in, in your lineup. And I just see it that way. I just see that they're just like, cool, he's good to go. Well, who gives two shits what happened? We need to get that cup. Yeah. Eh, not surprising, though. We see it all the time. This is... 
I'm like tired of hearing about it. It is. It is pretty frustrating. It's exhausting. Um, but you know what is exciting is the Chicago to uh, Chicago Steel jerseys that they're debuting on. Yeah, February seventeenth is the uh, Chicago Steel the Eras Night. I myself am not a Swifty, but and these jerseys are a bit much, are a bit. But I love, I love just them leaning into, you know, branching out and and riding the coattails of Taylor Swift's um, entourage. Um, and I hope people in that area are excited and um they're trying to get the Swifties into hockey. <laughs> like I don't hate the idea of getting more fans. It like obviously that's what you want in a sport. I just I don't understand the hype around this woman. <laughs> I really don't. Please, somebody tell us. I don't get it. Um, she writes music. I think music. her songs are fine. I I haven't listened to the it, the latest soundtrack. I, but I'm not I'm not dissing on anyone. If you like Taylor Swift, good for you. Yeah, great I, for you. I just don't understand why you have to talk <laughs> about her every moment of every second of every day. <laughs> I don't get it. Not one person should have so much power. Whatever she does, everyone has to know about it. People, if someone uh, says anything, slight criticism around her, all her fans start attacking that one person. It's like, chill out. It's fine. She'll live. I think that could be said with, like, really any sort of, like, extreme group of dedicated fans. Yes. But I think... Sports fans included. Because of... Yeah, I think because she is just, you know, she's, her music is just dominating the charts right now of, like, people in love, in love with what she's bringing. Um, I think we're hearing about it a whole lot more. Yeah. But, yeah, people need to just take it down. Take it down a couple of notches. It's okay. Sorry to any any listeners who are Swifties and they're like, "How dare you!" I'm not hating on her. <laughs> I know you're gonna get our podcast canceled. I'm sorry, I'm not hating on her. I just don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> you do you. Okay, let let's end it with uh, this announcement from the um, for the NHL All Stars. Like, how are you feeling about this? I don't actually get what's going on, but I'm here to to sit back and, and watch it unfold. They have celebrity uh, captains. So does that mean that they're going to be out on the ice with them? Or are they just going to like I'm sure they'll be just on, the on the bench? Because, because I did see um, right before we hopped on that um, during the Kraken's practice, Michael Buble was apparently out there taking some shots. And he looked like he's had some experience with with playing the game so Canadian I wouldn't be surprised uh, with the exception of Will Harnett I don't know his background in in hockey but I'm kind of wondering like are they gonna partake in some way like directly on the ice that would be so much fun honestly if they do I don't know anything about this Tate McRae person like if she's on the ice too But okay, I'm just now seeing. You haven't this. seen like her her shorts. Like I don't know a whole lot about her either. But she's been like slowly becoming this this icon in in the the hockey, probably in like the TikTok type realms what, and she, whatever. But shorts, like she's she plays. So I don't know her background. All I know is there's been some like IG shorts and like TikToks of her being in like there was that there was that music video where she took it in like a hockey rink and she was in like hockey gear and she's been doing like TikTok shorts or whatever like 
in different jerseys. Apparently she's linked to be previously dating somebody on the Columbus Blue Jackets. So there's that that's about all I know. And I, I wait, I thought those were rumors. I didn't know all that stuff. I, I'm just like unraveling the things that I've come across in scrolling through my Twitter feed. I don't actually, we don't, this is a lot of stuff We don't come here that, for accurate news. I did not seek this stuff out. This is just what I've come across in passing <laughs> is to answer your question, who she is. I think that's who she is. I know she's a singer. That's as much as I know. That That's literally all I know about her. Uh, and she's, she's just been, been linked to a uh, NHL player around who, the hockey space. Yeah, because one I forget what player, and it might be the one you mentioned. He, I think, full cylinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess he DM'd her or something. Like he's trying to get at her, or he talked about her in some way. Like he has a crush on her or something, and that's why people have linked them together. I don't think they actually dated. Okay. <laughs> But I'm just now noticing that the Hughes brothers are going to be co-captaining with Michael Bublé, which doesn't make any sense because they're not in the same division. I was seeing people saying that this is like the older brother who has to take his little brother with him everywhere because his mom told him. Yes, this is exactly what And like, I don't know if you saw yesterday that the Canucks went against the Leafs and the Canucks went up like three to nothing and then the Leafs started storming back and there was this clip of that was circulating of, like slamming the- of Quinn who was on his on the bench and he was like breaking his stick and I'm like god Quinn <laughs> bro he's like for how like reserved he is I'm worried for him yeah, in that moment. He's angry. I saw someone what commenting. What else are you not telling us? I saw someone commenting over that. You know, like a meme. They shared it and was like, when you find out, you have to share a captaincy with your brother in the All-Star game. <laughs> but yes, I agree with you that this doesn't make any sense. And like, so, okay, if you wanted to have jack be a captain i guess he can't share the wealth with with an austin matthews so you <laughs> like yeah sure we we all love this whole like i'm sure they're tired of being linked to their brother especially jack with having luke on his team yeah i'm sure they're tired uh, of it uh, yeah i don't know and the nhl are just kind of like we're not i know <laughs> it's a it's a great storyline the Hughes brothers. They're like glued to the hip because you, you put know them what there. they're gonna ask you know what they're gonna ask to them? What? How great is it to be co captaining with your, with your brother, brother at the All Star and they're just gonna be like Jesus fucking Christ. It's I can't get rid of him. Yeah, sure, it's great. It's, it's like so much fun. Like, it's like the people who ask And these they're questions, gonna be like, Oh, epic epic quote. The people who ask these questions have never had a sibling. Like you get sick of them. You can spend a certain amount of time with them and you're fine but once you're over that limit it's like okay go back <laughs> go away now <laughs> whatever this is this i feel like this is going to be an interesting all-star game and I, I might tune in just to see the, the skills and things i hope they make it fun because it feels different all right I think that's kind of all we have to say about all of that. Um, yeah. Any closing thoughts? Go Niners. Go, go yeah. Niners, yeah. <laughs> there, they survive one more week. We live to see another weekend. Yeah. Go Sharks, even though they suck. It's fine. I guess we should throw in a go Canucks for Drew, even though he's not here, I guess. <laughs> no, he needs to be here to say that. All right, take it back. <laughs> retract that support he needs to be here to support his own team (laughs) all right guys thanks for joining thanks for listening okay thanks for downloading as always i'm your host jay (laughs) Bye. bye